good. Alle auf ihren Plätzen. Schönen guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren. Mein Name ist Monika. Ich bin Wirtschafts. I'm Monika Graf. I'm uh, the journalist at the Salzburger Nachrichten. And I have a very interesting panel. And we are discussing a very interesting subject, mobility and tourism without open borders. The Corona pandemic has really uh, hit tourism l like no other branch. Before that, we had the, we had the question of over tourism and everybody knows what that means. Policy even thought uh, to forbid or to make very expensive um, short distance flights. Party tourism was criticized, then also uh, ships and cruises uh, with ships and and then and then w the borders were closed more or less overnight also in the European Union then um, airlines the cruising ships st stopped in the harbors or outside and the lockdowns and the strict restrictions for every kind of movement did the rest and more or less uh, stopped tourism at all since that time not only in europe but also in other countries we talk about under tourism and the question is how can uh, uh, traveling uh, go on after the restrictions of the corona crisis? What that means for a touristic country like Austria and how despite uh, traveling restrictions, despite pandemic, what is possible? <coughs> and I think this can be explained very well by the competent minister, the Minister for Agriculture, Regions and Tourism, Elisabeth Köstinger. So, bitte, Sie haben das Wort. Thanks a lot. Very estimated ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be present at this fourth dialogue round of the Salzburg Summit Conference. And I would like to thank uh, Mr. Schausberger, congratulate him for the organization of this summit. We all know that the corona pandemic has hit very strongly tourism, but also the event branch, the congresses. A lot of restrictions uh, have to be fulfilled, and you and your team still succeeded to organize that conference. Thanks a lot. Estimated ladies and gentlemen, we have to uh, discuss the question mobility and closed borders. How can that work? And let me uh, look back a few uh, Yes, I was born at a little village at the border of the former Yugoslavia. I was raised on a farm with four generations with my grand-grandparents, my uncles, aunts, grandparents, parents, as it was normal at that time. And my grand-grandmother never traveled more than to Klagenfurt at the Wörthersee, which is 56 kilometers from our home. This was the radius of a generation. Uh, well, and we cannot understand that anymore. Well, I have seen more or less all continents of the world. Nearly every week I'm in a plane and I'm used that there are open borders. And then the corona pandemic and the first closing of the European borders, then travel warnings which sometimes popped up during the night was not only an economic effect but also restricted the life and freedom of everybody. In tourism, especially moving from one place to the other is the 
basic condition. Holiday is a wonderful time for everybody. You love to see other countries, to spend leisure time with friends, with family, to just enjoy a change for many Austrians. It is also nice to be at the seaside and Austria, on the other hand, is a very popular destination for tourism. And well, freedom of traveling is very important, especially when we think about culture tourism, city tourism. And there mainly this is uh, where populated by foreign guests overseas guests. Austria as a country in the center of a continent has a very good con precondition. Well, our guests come uh, from a radius of 500 to 1000 kilometers and so it's uh, we are not astonished that 75 of guests who spend their uh, holiday in Austria come with car. Well, the railroad, the, the planes, the buses have increased, but number one is still the car uh, and Austria, which can be reached by car. Since Corona, this tendency has increased a lot did not uh, travel abroad, they did not take a plane, the framework conditions were not very secure, it was not sure if you really could travel to one of the islands or to the foreign countries and so it was a great challenge also for us as a tourism country, Austria, to set the framework conditions so that <clears throat> movements were possible again. Well, in principle, we have succeeded. Uh, well, the second wave uh, around Christmas was a shock for tourism because winter tourism is one of the economic, economically very significant uh, season. Uh, a lot of our GNP is based on tourism and this complete stop or cancellation of winter tourism was hard for us. Then in spring, corona infections grew and together with uh, Mr. Kurz, our chancellor, we started already in March to restore this traveling freedom. It was, of course, a great challenge in times of a pandemic but then we had uh, the idea of the green certificate and within a short time we could uh, just make this green pass popular, find an alley with all tourism uh, specialists and then it is said that uh, the European Union is working very, very slowly in order to make solutions but I think the introduction of the green passport shows the contrary. It shows that the European Union can act very quickly and make decisions in a time of crisis and unite all the member states. On that, in that uh, moment, I would like to thank all my colleagues, the touristic ministers in uh, Europe, because they felt most pressure just to open uh, the borders again and to uh, just suspend traveling, uh, uh, f traveling blocks and thanks to the Croatian uh, colleagues who also supported us to do that. And the good situation in summer should not deceive us uh, because especially in city tourism when we have cultural events, big events, congresses, f um, fairs, we still have great challenges. The last summer season was more than we expected Today we received the uh, figures of Statistik Austria. Uh, we had 47 million overnight stays in Austria. This is a plus of 18 percent compared with the year 2020 and especially August was a very uh, successful season with 2.3 uh, percent more night stays than in the year 2019 before the corona pandemic and I really we should also thank our enterprises, our hotels who worked uh, 24 hours a day despite the lack of qualified labor 
and they could receive guests from many countries. But, well, we should not forget that city tourism is still very much affected. Here we still have minus 50 percent. Uh, compared to normal years. There are no big events, no sport events, no cultural events, and this is felt very painfully. And also international uh, tourism has not yet started. We want to go back, of course, especially congresses and fairs and exhibitions before the corona pandemic. We were on place six of the most popular congress destinations all over the world. France still is on uh, place number one. But we also thought during the last years what we could do in order to support that branch. And so we have now a protection umbrella for enterprises. We invented that. That means Congress organizes uh, also cultural uh, institutions can use this protection umbrella. We take over the risk that um, events are cancelled or restricted due to corona. And so we want to be ahead and we want to uh, organize big events again in our country. There is a change as far as traveling behavior is concerned. We have seen this especially last year. Well, when people are booking, uh, wellness possibilities were very important to have, a, uh, have wireless LAN or to have parking lots. This was important for booking. Last year, uh, safety was even more important. What about the corona regulations? What should be considered? Are, your, um, are the employees in uh, hotels tested? This was important for guests when they booked. And this was interesting for Austria. And I think we fulfilled more or less everything which was wanted by the guests. Well, we see an increased sensitiveness, awareness uh, of nature and environment. We see a lot uh, of more attention paid to health issues. We see more awareness as far as quality is concerned, especially last year and also this this year, a lot of Austrians uh, spent holidays in their own country and they were surprised about the high quality of uh, Austrian tourism compared to other uh, holiday destinations uh, which uh, they were used to during the last years. And we should just stabilize this development. We should show that there is a good offer and a fair price in Austria and that this might be a sustainable investment. And so we would also like to uh, connect with tourists of the last years and make them to tourists and guests which who come often. Well, despite uh, or above, apart from uh, closed uh, borders, there are some other tendencies. Uh, people still uh, go by car, but they are also more aware as far as uh, environmental protection is concerned. People are more interested in public transport. And in a country like Austria, this is very easy to do, in, especially in the big cities. But in the rural destinations, there is very often the question of the last mile. And during the last months, we have tried already to close that gap, also in cooperation with the tourism regions, with a lot of private initiatives, for example, also. Public uh, transport was improved, e-mobility was offered in a lot of regions. Digitalization is also offering a big chance in order to cover these demand of many guests. And with that subject, I think we will also deal uh, within the uh, tourism and mobility days in Linz, 18th and 19th of October. And we also want to discuss these issues. We would like to use the chance uh, to uh, position Austria again in worldwide tourism and also the question of sustainability. High quality tourism should be emphasized and Austria should uh, still 
be one of the most popular, most uh, successful uh, holiday destinations of the world. Thanks a lot. Well, to just to secure, to guarantee security for guests as far as their health is concerned and also give safety to the enterprises and prevent them from uh, go bankrupt if an event is cancelled last minute. So I would like to present the panel now. Well, let's go uh, from A to C. The head, there is the Andreas Bado, the chairman and initiator of Castle Road Austria. Uh, this initiative uh, covers uh, 37 castles, monasteries in Slovenia, Upper Aust Lower Austria and Burgenland, which just offer um, sports programs, history, culinary events, culture, and they want to present these historical places. Sereni Ceccarelli, she is a student in Rome and in Salzburg and within her studies in the Institute of the Regions she uh, published a comparing uh, study analysis about four regions in Italy uh, about the effects of uh, Corona, Veneto, Latium, Sicily and um, and then uh, the Don Ciclavina, the State Secretary uh, for uh, Ministry of Tourism and Sports, who is also responsible that his country could survive the pandemic with insignificant restrictions. The chairman of the Smart City Praja of Romania, Cristia Macedonci, this is a city in Siebenbürgen, Many of you might know it as Kronstein. It's a very important touristic city. The Dracula Castle is not far from this city. Then the vice president of the Czech Tourism Union, Jaromir Polasek. Well, that is um, an organization of 16 touristic associations and they are also partner for the Ministry of Regional Development in Czech, which is uh, responsible for tourism. Then the press, the spokesperson of the Federal Association of German Tourism Industry, Nicole von Stockert. Also, this is an independent association. And the most important lady for touristic promotion in Austria, Lisa Wedding, since the 1st June, she is the managing director of the Österreich Werbung. And maybe also a small remark, my colleague Rainer Novak said yesterday that his panel has the same amount of ladies and gentlemen, and it's the case today. Even the women are in the majority today. So, but still, I would like to start with Mr. Bardo. For many years, you are promoting traveling and beauty in the near distance. So that was what became very important in the Corona pandemic. This <clears throat> holiday, this more or less ordered interest at home, did it open the interests for your region? Do you get now more support by politics? Well, let me answer the first answer. You can be sure, well, I can be sure, after the first lockdown, we have doubled uh, the number of our visitors. I can say this about my castle, which is Kornberg in southeast Styria. Well, I just did something else because during the lockdown, I offered 16 online guided tours in the castle in, in order to keep my guests. And so I had three or 4,000 uh, tourists, interested tourists who always uh, just attended my guided tours, my online guided tours. And I could keep these tourists. And after that, and many things, when you do something like that, then people will come. No, on the contrary, the clients came when they saw what 
they can see in my castle. And I think especially the new media are a very important factor for us. And I will tell about that in more detail. We also have still online guided tours and we are trying to do this on a global level. And you get more support? Well, the support is not very significant due to different reasons, but it's my own fault because I, as a managing director of our family enterprise, I do not get a salary and, and I worked in agriculture and Romania and I developed there a very big um, a very big enterprise in Romania and of course it's not affordable to pay a managing director in a castle. You always have to think, do I restore the roof or do I make an advertisement or do I pay a managing director and you cannot afford to have an, an, a managing director who is paid. On the other side, of course, we tried a lot via the Chamber of Commerce but I'm a so-called freelancer. I'm a free trade and I had the first problems with that, but I'm quite satisfied how it's running today. And in my other enterprise in Meyerhof, where I have an exhibition about palaces and palaces of the world, here I got some support and subsidies. But when you lose 100,000 euros and you get 3,000 3, euros compensation, well, that's not very significant. But it's better if people got some subsidies which who needed it most. And just the fact that between Austria and Slovenia there a border was erected, was this detrimental for you? Of course it was not good for us, but our Slovenian neighbors are, are very clever and they do not have to use the border station of Spielfeld. We still have these small border stations and especially as far as Slovenia is concerned, there was an interact project which started four years ago and this is something which is helping us because in nine Slovenian castles we are represented and our Slovenian partners are represented in our folder which is describing the different um, castles. The folder is independent of the Interact project and we include even four Croatian castles and uh, we are already discussing with the Hungarian castles situated at the border because uh, historically seen this was more or less the fence of the, uh, Aus of the Roman Empire. It was more or less the border between the eastern and western part of Europe and that's why we have so many castles and fortresses at this border. So this has an historical background. Mr. Klavina, yes, no European country that depends so much on tourism as uh, Croatia. One quarter of the economic performance comes from the uh, from tourism, and in contrast uh, to uh, the castle roads, uh, the figures have not doubled. How uh, could a company survive this crisis? Uh, uh, and or did Croatia rely too much uh, on uh, tourism? My uh, warm regards on behalf of Ministry of Tourism, our Minister Nikolina Bernats, to uh, Mrs. Uh, Minister uh, Kostinger, uh, Chairman Schausberger, and uh, esteemed colleagues here at the panel, and of course to you, Mrs. Graf, and. Uh, uh, to say that we're very happy to be here with you today and talk, uh, discuss this important topic. So yes, uh, y y very, um, very good point right there in the beginning. Uh, Croatia is uh, tourism is extremely important to Croatia. About 20% of our GDP, directly or indirectly, comes from revenues of tourism, and uh, of course everything that happened last year and this year uh, uh, basically forced us to make uh, certain decisions without precedence in, in many ways. Uh, and uh, of course, in best way uh, uh, to look at the situation was uh, to see is there uh, viability, is there 
uh, of course, common sense in order to try to restore tourism and still have tourism in a, in a year of epidemic or global pandemic. And I think uh, tourism proved, or this crisis basically proved to all of us that our lives have changed so much in a way that tourism is not, uh, it's not uh, a want anymore. Tourism is a need. Uh, because of our lifestyle, people showed and proved that even in the times of, of a great crisis, of global pandemic, they're willing to take a chance, they're willing to travel, they're willing to go outside their home because there is basically uh, their human necessity today. Uh, and um, so what we had to do, was, our job was to try to figure out a way uh, to maintain the uh, health of the nation at the same time uh, reopen our borders and try to offer tourism services in a way in a light that has never been done before. Of course, one of the foremost uh, ideas, uh, what we had to try to do is we had to make sure that we convinced uh, all our guests coming from uh, our major market is that we're a safe destination, that we're a destination that will do everything that it can to make sure that you have a healthy and good vacation in Croatia. And Croatia, uh, the safety brand, if you will, is something we've been building for years. Uh, and, uh, and we uh, worked on that significantly. So we came out with a uh, with the program um, Safe Saving Croatia, as you can see here that I have on my rear. Uh, it was, it's a part of the program that, uh, that shows our guests uh, that we have a, a very dedicated process from crossing the border to enjoying uh, goods and services in Croatia and all the tourism providers uh, who are part of the program and majority all of them are, had to uh, uh, hold a certain protocols and, uh, and processes uh, and and, uh, but not only that, it was important to, to visually show to our guests that this is, this is actually the case. Uh, last year, in the, in the middle of the, of the global pandemic and the beginning of the summer, we uh, started a program, uh, um, it was, I guess you could say, maybe predecessor to European Green Certificate, which was uh, Enter Croatia. And it was uh, our way of trying to make sure that we uh, allow guests to cross, who are coming to Croatia to cross border uh, in a way that they, they have in the past, but they would, from the confidence of their own home prior to traveling to Croatia, enter all necessary information, where they're going, where they're staying, information about their health. Uh, and uh, so as they would come to the border and scan their ID card or passport, those two systems would completely emerge and we would have it registered in the system exactly where the guests are going, what the route of travel is. Uh, and that helped us um, still have a significant number of people in the country, but uh, knowing exactly where they are and in case there's problems, um, you know, react on it. And then translated into this year, uh, into the uh, green uh, COVID certificate in which uh, we were the, uh, proud to say that Croatia was the first country in the European Union that uh, enforced, uh, we started with the program uh, a day before June 1st, the green certificate. Uh, and, um, and I want to thank, uh, of course, uh, uh, Mrs. Minister Kostinger and other partners that really pushed for the strong agenda of uh, green uh, digital certificates and to make Make sure that we have unified approach because if we didn't have that I think uh, the the benefits or costs uh, in a negative way will be much significant on everybody else. And now it actually proved uh, that the system work, that the system can work. Uh, and I think all of us can say, uh, we were listening to the uh, keynote speech of, of Mrs. Minister uh, Kostinger, so we know that you had a very good summer season. Uh, Croatia had tremendously good summer season. Um, we had, um, it, as a month of September, for example, right now we're only few percentages in terms of arrivals and overnight stays less than the record year 2019. And we are going to finish this year about 80% of the tourism of 2019, which is very, very good. Uh, but then uh, it also now uh, the, the summer destinations, now we're coming into the winter and 
we had uh, a great, um, I think we can all say we had a great working relationship throughout the summer season uh, between our countries, but of course uh, uh, within the EU. And now it's uh, winter season, and now it's time also to have those guests, for example, coming to Croatia. They love coming to Austria, love coming skiing here. It's a preferred destination, number one. Uh, uh, and I'm sure that they will uh, continue into the summer season. So basically, we have all proved that even in the times of very significant economic uncertainty and the health danger that people will travel. We just need to find a way and uh, we have found a way and uh, probably this will not go away anytime soon. So we, we have to look at it realistically. So uh, now it's time to look into uh, next year and the whole another cycle. And I'm also here uh, proud to say that our project Safe Stave in Croatia, it's not going to end with, uh, with this, uh, as this global pandemic ends. We have actually already made certain plans that they will extend this program and they will separate in three different spheres. Uh, they will not only deal with the health part of Safe Stave in Croatia. So it basically, um, you know, we use this crisis uh, to help us create something better and in order to get better. Uh, and uh, I guess any crisis is good in that way if it can be used in a proper manner, right? We'll be talking about that during the second round. Uh, Mrs. Ciccarelli, you uh, in your study have, uh, have uh, uh, shown frightening, frightening aspects uh, regions with record numbers in the past. Here tourism um, uh, broke down by, uh, 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 was reduced by two thirds differently to Croatia. Where were the effects very uh, um, large and uh, 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 I'd like to thank the Institute of the Regions of Europe for inviting me to, to such a high profile conference. <laughs> Uh, it's an honor to be with you and to speak about uh, the effects of COVID on the tourism industry in Italy. Uh, as uh, we all know, uh, the Italian economy is deeply dependent on um, tourism. And in 2019, uh, the 13% 13, 13 of uh, the Italian GDP uh, with 200, um, 233 billion euro was represented by tourism and almost 15% of the total population was uh, employed in the touristic sector. Uh, in 2020, uh, the restriction in movement of people um, uh, between countries and between Italian regions uh, caused a setback to an upward trend that uh, was experienced in Italy in 2019. Uh, in 2020, the numbers of tourists uh, dropped dramatically and uh, Italy lost uh, 75 million, uh, million tourists with a 30 billion euro income lost. Um, according to my analysis, um, the regions that suffered the most were, um, were Veneto, uh, Lazio, um, and Sicily, and I decided also to focus my research on uh, Piedmont because there are some data that I think that uh, should be analyzed. Uh, my research focused mainly on the restaurants, on the hotels, and uh, on museums. And uh, as far as the catering sector is concerned, uh, the drop uh, in the incomes was about 50% uh, in comparison uh, of, with uh, 2019. And the drop in the museum's uh, arrive, uh, visitors was about 55% uh, uh, in comparison with uh, 2019. According to a UNESCO uh, research, uh, one, of, uh, one out of eight museums will uh, close in the future, and I think it is, a, it is an alarming um, data because uh, uh, culture should be at the heart of our economy and of our lives. Um, coming back to the regions, um, as I said before, the region and the city that suffered the most were um, Veneto and the city of uh, Venice, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And uh, Venice, for example, lost more than 12 million tourists. And uh, some airports uh, were closed and they didn't open anymore in 2020. 
Um, moreover, uh, I decided to focus my research on Lazio, which is my region. I'm from Rome and I was born in Rome. Uh, and uh, I was uh, mm, shocked by the images of uh, St. Peter's uh, Square and the Spanish steps with empty and without tourists, which um, tourists are the, the fuel of, uh, of Rome. Um, in 2020, rough, roughly 15% of uh, the hotel rooms were, was occupied and uh, uh, Rome hosted just 20% of the tourists in comparison with 2019. Um, according to Federalberghi Lazio, which is uh, an hotel association research um, office, they, um, they, uh, told, they um, stated that in 2021, uh, only 120 hotels out of uh, 1,000 200 hotels were open, and some of them have not reopened anymore. Uh, in 2020, the, the drop of tourists was caused also by the lack of, uh, of cruises that, is, that are um, a big source of uh, tourists and uh, for our economy. Um, moreover, I decided to focus on the region of Piedmont because, uh, um, because uh, it registered um, uh, an increase of tourists, uh, and especially in uh, national tourists, uh, because uh, um, mm, a lot of uh, the touristic accommodations accepted uh, the so-called uh, holiday voucher that was, uh, mm, that was put forward by the Italian government to encourage national uh, people to travel within uh, Italy. Uh, and uh, um, an alarming um, per percentage is the one experienced by the Egyptian Museum, uh, in which uh, there was uh, minus 70 percent of uh, the tourists in comparison to 2019. Uh, in the end, I focus on Sicily because uh, it is characterized by seasonal tourism and seasonal jobs, short-term contracts, and uh, it experienced a very consistent drop. Um, in June 2020, for example, only 40% of uh, the total of the hotels was open. Uh, at the end, uh, um, as, I, as we have seen, uh, these data are quite alarming. But maybe if I have the time, I will think also about positive things about 21, 2021 and uh, the future. <laughs> so there is still hope, uh, Mrs. Fedig. Now summarizing uh, what uh, was said, there still is the need for tourism. Uh, the beginning of the corona crisis, you uh, were affected directly, but not in uh, the trade, if I understood that correctly. But Austria uh, depends more on tourism than Italy, uh, about 15%. Uh, so what is the, the, the customer, the guest structure? How did it, the tourist structure, how did it develop? Because there were uh, a lot of shifts. Yes, sir. Uh, thank, uh, thank you very much for being able to he be here on this uh, 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 tourism uh, panel. Austria came uh, uh, from a year 2019, uh, 153 uh, million overnight states. As we say, we had an international guest tract of 75%. That's the highest value in uh, Europe. And that shows how much uh, in Austria we um, um, uh, handle um, uh, foreign uh, tourists and how we can um, enthuse them and make it attractive. So the pandemic in the past one and a half year has had major effects. Winter 2020 was uh, still at a record high and then there was the lockdown in March. And the entire tourist uh, trade, of course, was uh, surprised and did not know what to do. Uh, hotels were closed. Uh, and then uh, after a few weeks, we were able to reopen and 20, uh, 20 due to spontaneity um, and creativity, we created safe uh, tourism. And we also succeeded in convincing foreign visitors uh, 
Of course, we have to distinguish between uh, in, uh, last year and also this uh, summer. Uh, the European guests, of course, uh, was uh, very large. Uh, people from uh, far away markets are, have not uh, arrived uh, yet. We can say that the Americans are the first ones who are on their way to us. So that, of course, depends on the traveling conditions of the individual countries. The Americans may travel now and also the uh, uh, flights offered. And here, of course, with the far away markets, uh, we depend on the flights. Oh, with the Americans, it has become more, and we feel that the Americans are returning to Europe. On the other side of the world, having a look at Asia, we see that we, we will have to wait for quite some time. Uh, particularly, China has a very restrictive uh, uh, incoming uh, uh, policy. We have very few flights available from China to Austria. But we assume that next year, uh, with the Olympic Winter Games in Peking, uh, uh, will be a starting point uh, to open again and uh, uh, to open again for European tourism and we will then expect in the second quarter also the Asians back and then the other um, part of the world, the um, um, United Arab Air Emirates, uh, a third a very interesting market uh, for us. Uh, we've seen that the Arabs uh, uh, are world champions in the vaccination with high vaccination rates. And the Arabs uh, have come back to Austria. We have definitely more flights being offered, particularly to Salzburg uh, from Dubai. And uh, talking to the airlines, uh, 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 utilization is, as I never would have expected, so high uh, utilization rate. And this summer, uh, many Arab uh, visitors uh, were seen in Austria. I'm very glad that this summer, we, uh, since we are open uh, from the 19th of May, we, uh, we were the, uh, uh, among the last 20 uh, uh, countries that opened. That's to say we recover from the back. But the positive thing is that we had one uh, concrete Freedom Day uh, the 19th May, uh, we knew that as from that day we could return to Austria. There was this demand for travels to Austria and May even we had bookings uh, uh, more than uh, in 2020 and this is continued. The June, July um, booking uh, rates become uh, more and more. Uh, we were uh, the minister also said it in August. You, it's difficult to believe uh, the best result ever in overnight states, we are 2% above uh, 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 2019. Having a look at the guest structures, which, uh, still, the Americans are still uh, lacking uh, uh, and the uh, Asians. And nevertheless, we are uh, uh, beyond 2019. There is one guest uh, group, that's the Germans, the largest target group for Austria. 25% more German tourists uh, than in uh, 2019. And this, of course, leads to uh, a super restart uh, figures uh, in Austria. We're glad uh, about uh, regaining this clientele. Then I would like to switch to Mrs. van Stockert. <coughs> well, Germany is not a real uh, touristic destination. It's considered to be an industrial country, but a lot of the GNP is also earned by tourism. To which extent uh, was uh, Germany affected, or German tourism was affected by by um, pandemic? Uh, well, when the Easter uh, holiday started, uh, Germans wanted to travel to uh, Mallorca again. So thanks a lot for the invitation. Well, Corona was uh, very, uh, was a disaster for the German tourism. And uh, we are a country where people live for tourism. On the other side, we love to travel. And we love to travel abroad, but we are also a travel destination. 
Well, before Corona, we were growing. Tourism was growing. We had 500 million overnight stays. This was 100 million more than 10 years before. So it was a growing branch. It was a job engine. Well, not the same percentage than the other classical tourism uh, destinations. But when we talk about machinery, automotive industry, which is important in uh, Germany, but as far as the economic power is concerned, tourism is at the same level. And when we think about jobs created by tourism, we, it, tourism is even more important. So tourism is very important for the German economy. And to that extent, it was really, well, this uh, c closing uh, due to Corona was really bad. People were used to growth rate, the enterprises, the employees, and uh, then all overnight there was a lockdown in Germany. And some of uh, the enterprises were quite long in this lockdown. When we think also about travel agents in CIS, for example, specialists for Australia or these specialized agencies, they are still in a kind of lockdown. There were also surveys about um, existence and the and enterprises uh, who, which were afraid to survive no matter if it was in the hotel industry or in the travel industry. Well, they were afraid to be bankrupt and many did not know how to go on. Thanks God, then we got some subsidies, state subsidies. At the beginning, we had this short time working, which was started quite early. And then in the service branch, it was also used and we had up to 1 million in short time working, even more. There we have some different figures, so it was, uh, well, there was help which was given quite quickly, which also saved certain jobs. Then we got some other subsidies which were used by all enterprises, associations also worked hard in order to persuade politics that all branches are suffering and it took quite a long time until also the big enterprises got subsidies which has something to do with European Union law and we talked with uh, German politicians in order to persuade Brussels that also big enterprises need financial support and uh, when there were enterprise chains or associated uh, enterprises, it's not sufficient only to support one part of the group, but you have to support all members of a company group. And finally, this worked, but it took a lot of convincing, but now uh, we can say the subsidies have supported. So in Germany, the national tourism could more or less compensate for lacking uh, foreign tourists. Yes, we had a lot of, of German tourists already within German. 30% of uh, Germans had their ho holidays in Germany. 30 went to the, to the Mediterranean Sea and 30% abroad. So, well, in Germany, the overnight stays were mainly last year uh, German tourists. And so the Germans had their holidays in Germany and it helped, of course, yes. And this was more than before because about the international guests, of course, were missed. Mr. Macedonci Brashov is uh, a very important city for tourism, but you are not only living because of tourists. So, but you also have industry, Airbus has, uh, has, um, a production site in the automotive industry, but still also you had to cancel the so-called Oktoberfest and the new airport, uh, the opening of the new airport is also, also postponed. But this combination, historical city plus modern industry, modern economy, is that maybe the right way in a time like ours? Yes, it works quite well. And I have to say tourism is on the same level as automotive and the industry, Kronstadt, 
has two columns. One is the industrial column with automotive and also aviation. So high technology investors coming from German speaking countries and tourism. And as far as tourism is concerned, we are the capital, the uncrowned capital of tourism in Romania. We have tour, we receive tourists all over the year. We have a skiing resort in our region. Within 15 minutes, you can ski, uh, f uh, well, which is very close to the city of uh, Prashov. I think the only thing, you, uh, the only thing where it is possible, it's in Innsbruck. Dracula Castle is 30 kilometers from our city. We have a lot of castles. We learn a lot of Andreas Bado, the inventor of the castle road. We also want to create that in um, to, uh, Romania, including the fortress churches. But many tourists we receive from the German-speaking countries. And when we had the first lockdown, I thought, what can we do for the post-pandemic time? Well, I was sure that there will be a time after the pandemic. Due to history, you always know that uh, pandemic situations last for two, maximum three years. So you have to prepare for the time after the pandemic. And then I said, many tourists are coming from, uh, from the German-speaking countries and with friends and with partners. I created the network of the German-speaking restaurants in Romania. And we have now 60 restaurants from Hungary to the Ukrainian border, wonderful hotels, old castles, uh, castles which are now hotels, uh, well, and also the so-called Saxonian houses, which are now wonderful locations. And there we also published a catalog. I brought this catalog for you and for Mr. Schausberger, to whom I thank very much to be present today. And so you can see that Romania can be discovered also in a different way. Romania is more or less the secret of um, of tourism, yes, you know about Dracula, you know about Siebenbürgen, you know that they speak Romanian, Hungarian and German in Siebenbürgen, but you don't know too much. But I can only tell you, Siebenbürgen is wonderful, the Danube Delta is wonderful, and also uh, the Carpats, the mountains of the Carpats. And due to that network which we have created, we also established a partnership with a site which is called Holidays in Romania. And here we have our own home page for our sites. And here you can get all the information about Romania, about holidays in Romania, and about safety. The first step we did was how can we bring safety to the tourists. And also this network of German-speaking restaurants also emphasized safety because people were afraid during the uh, pandemic. And at least we wanted to... Uh, overcome language barrier. They knew at least when they come to our hotels, to our restaurants, somebody is speaking German. And this is also an issue of safety. And this was important. Our summer was great like in Austria and I think also like in Germany, we had the best summer since the last years and next year our airport will be finished. This is the first airport which was built after the revolution. This is Brasov Gilbach and uh, there is also the nickname Dracula Airport because everybody wants to see the Dracula castle. This is a, a subject in many films and everybody wants to see that. And that's where people uh, make their selfies and show them on the social media and on the social network. Mr. Polasek, Prague, uh, Prague is not really a secret destination when traveling. It's one of the cities which are more or less uh, were overwhelmed by tourism. They were suffocating under tourists. It's difficult to imagine how this works without American tourists. 
and the Czech Republic was also very strict as far as movement was concerned. Entering the country was concerned to which extent were you supported by regional tourism? Yeah. Uh, I must start with a few numbers. Uh, in 2019, uh, in the whole Czech Republic, we had uh, 21 million guests uh, who made 57 million overnights. So those 57 million uh, were uh, two-thirds in the region and one-third the whole Prague. Uh, it's very important for us because uh, when we count the numbers from last to, uh, or this season and last season, we must say uh, how it looked like in Prague and in the regions. Because the, the regions uh, the, the last uh, two years uh, were full of um, uh, domestic tourists, but the Prague uh, was still empty. Uh, that's a big question about the future, and that's uh, what, uh, what's uh, our uh, biggest uh, task to bring the international guests to Prague again. Because uh, when we uh, look at the numbers back, uh, we see that uh, it's half to half the Czech tourists and the foreign tourists. And most of the foreign tourists uh, focus on Prague and then to the region. So uh, for us, it's, uh, it's uh, a very big question how to start uh, conference tourism again, uh, how to uh, promote uh, uh, the, the whole Republic, but Prague mainly uh, in, the, uh, in the foreign countries. And also uh, it's a question uh, of uh, flights and the whole uh, the system of uh, flights uh, to the Czech Republic. So. Uh, since the 2019 was record uh, of, of in, the, in the Republic, then uh, we had to change things. And as I see it as an opportunity uh, to change things because uh, before this, uh, uh, this pandemic situation, uh, tourism in Czech Republic uh, uh, was made uh, by entrepreneurs but had no focus on the political sphere. That's one thing we look uh, at the Austria systems uh, all the time and that's what uh, we would like to bring to Czech Republic because uh, when the pandemic starts uh, our ministry didn't know the numbers, didn't know how many uh, organizers there are, didn't know how many even hotels with uh, the, the, the standards, how many of them are they. So now uh, we helped us as a union and our associations helped to, to bring the rules, uh, to bring uh, also systems to the support for the accommodation, and uh, I must say uh, it helped to, to survive. Uh, the question now for us, and one uh, which is more invisible, and also in Prague, which is even very important, is that we don't have any uh, unemployed people. We, we have zero unemployment rate. And many of the people from the tourism industry, as it uh, moved uh, the, the levels, moved to, to other sectors. And now we can't uh, bring them back to tourism, and we have very, um, uh, very. Uh, we are afraid very much uh, about the quality of services, which is uh, directly connected to people. So uh, from the 19, uh, 2019, where we spoken about over tourism in Prague, in Český Krumlov, other places, when we spoke about how to get more money from the tourists. It, it changed uh, completely, and I see it um, as, um, as it was said, as an opportunity to change things and to go more sustainable way in those um, uh, previously overcrowded places, but also to bring new people to, to tourism and to show the tourism from the, the other side. And it's not only about uh, chefs or, or uh, the receptionists, but also about people connected to tourism uh, as uh, laundries and bakers and, and other, uh, other professions that are connected to tourism, not uh, directly, but indirectly through selling the products to, and services to them. So for, for us now, the biggest question about the future is uh, uh, foreign markets to return uh, the, the tourists from foreign markets and also the people in the industry as well. Das bringt mich zur quasi zweiten Runde. Uh, to the second round. 
and now I would like to discuss with you uh, how does sustainable tourism look like? Matthias Horx, a future researcher, said at the beginning of the year in an interview that people will travel differently after Corona, slowly by car, by train, but there will be more awareness and they will have more intensive, more individual experiences during their holidays. They do not want to have ready made experiences anymore. Uh, do you agree to which extent can tourism be changed? How does uh, sustainable tourism look like? Well, because if there's a nice place, the more people come, the more Instagram, the more people. Well, Mrs. Minister Kerstinger, well, in Austria, we have heard we have heard the figures of September. Uh, you said last September we had one third night stays, overnight stays less, but it's still less than uh, 2019. Uh, will that be uh, like that in a sustainable tourism or Will it be like before? Will there be the same number of guests? Will there be the party in the mountains again or 300 rooms in the mountains? Where is sustainable tourism? Well, um, yeah, uh, maybe I start before the corona pandemic. As we have mentioned today already, the history of tourism is a success history in Austria. Well, from we always exceeded our records of overnight stays. We really had a kind of boom during the last year since the 70s. 2017 in Austria, uh, we uh, of course started uh, really talking about sustainability also on a political level. Well, what is for me important is the capital uh, coverage of enterprises because economic sustainability of tourism, before we talk about guests who arrive, we really have to have a look at the enterprises. And then what did we do? We did not only have a look at the overnight stays and the arrivals, but we uh, looked at the so-called satellite account, which includes all economic factors, labor force, duration of the season. And then 2019, we had new uh, new methods to measure efficiency. And we also said already that Austrian tourism is living uh, because of hospitality, of giving this feeling of home, of being at home when you uh, go to a hotel, when you go to a restaurant where you are friendly, welcomed, uh, this, well, apart from Vienna. So uh, this service quality of Austrian tourism, so employees are the key for sustainability. If we can continue our success of in tourism depends on the employees of the future. Well, it's like in all countries, uh, a lot of employees have left the branch and we are now starting the biggest action to bring them back. There will be a tax reform which make will make it possible because the costs for uh, wages have to be reduced for the uh, for the uh, for the employers, it must not, it should not be that it's people earn more when they stay at home and not go to work. We also have to talk about the seasonal labor force. Then tourist education is important. We have a wonderful quality in our tourism schools, but we lose most of them to other branches. And why? because they know how to work. Everybody wants to have somebody who worked in tourism. And that's why we really have to make our touristic uh, professions more uh, interesting, more attractive. Young people want to see sense in their work. It's not important that they, very often it's not important for them to earn 100 euros more or not, but am I appreciated? 
does my work give sense to my life? And the fourth is um, just apprenticeship. Apprenticeships must be on the same level as academical education because they are the handyman, the most important uh, labor force we have. That's why we make apprenticeship more attractive. And as a conclusion, well, that's this key question of the guests of the future. What does the tourist expect when he comes to Austria? And we really want to give a quality promise. There will be always cheap offers and things like that. But in Austria, we have succeeded with short time working, with economic subsidies. We have succeeded that we give the best starting conditions for tourism and become a high quality tourism. And what uh, has a certain value must cost something. We should not have dumped offers and we should not offer cheap holidays. We must know what our value and together also in cooperation with the Austrian uh, Österreich Werbung, we have to try hard in order to succeed in that high quality tourism and find it and so make Austria again great as a, a destination. So less guests, less guests who spend more and who stay longer. But uh, doesn't everybody want that at this panel? Well, I think Croatia wants to do the same. Is Croatia possible without mass tourism? Something that we have put very strong concentrated effort on. What's actually very encouraging to see is that this year uh, in particular, uh, not only that we had uh, uh, tourism back, but we have actually managed, and pandemic definitely helped in that sense, to actually have a, a, a little bit of the structure of the uh, guest arrivals change. For example, in August, in month of August, which is uh, almost like about 30% of, uh, of tourism uh, arrivals and when I stay in Croatia, uh, we had uh, uh, more uh, about 33% more fiscal revenues than August of 2019. So we had significant increase in the revenues and spending uh, oh, this year. Uh, uh, when we look at the, the, the main summer season, which shows us that basically, and, and this is very exact measure because we have a, um, a, a tax pro, uh, called the fiscal cash registers. So basically every invoice in tourism, whether it's in a restaurant, whether it's in a hotel uh, or a resale, anybody working with cash, it is automatically synced into the central uh, revenue system. So this is actually not estimates, these are the exact numbers. Um, and why that is? Uh, well, part of the reason is people saved money during, a, of course, and they had money to spend. But what we actually saw, and something that we have been trying to do over the last several years, uh, not necessarily change our uh, major markets, but change the structure of the guests coming from those markets. So we, what we noticed from all our major markets, say, from Germany, from Austria, from Slovenia, uh, for all our, let's say, 10 uh, uh, most, uh, most important markets in Croatia, uh, in uh, Europe, is that we had the better quality of the guests, you know, uh, spending more money and uh, maybe shift more towards families, a little bit less of uh, youth travels and things like that. So uh, this is very encouraging. But uh, in order, uh, it's interesting to hear uh, minister speaking about the labor problems and and the way to tackle them in the future and this is problems that we all have Croatia tremendous problem with labor as uh, may, maybe even more so uh, and uh, it's interesting to see how uh, the different approaches is how to bring these people back into the industry and uh, which kind of brings me to my point is um, looking at the big picture uh, and uh, the big picture looks like this if you look at Europe as a whole and then Europe is number one market, tourism market in the world. But then when we look at tourism across the world, we can see that tourism has now become basically third economical branch as far as its size. It has surpassed the automobile industry. It's only lacking a little bit behind chemical industry and oil industry. So it's right up there. Every 10th employee in Europe is in tourism, 
or tourism related uh, uh, activities. So this is a problem, a, a good problem to have, if you will. Uh, and, uh, and you have mentioned something that's very interesting to me, how maybe you didn't have a, a central system and you didn't monitor things like that, because I think for a lot of European countries, especially the big countries, the big economies like Germany, uh, Austria as well, uh, France, you know, tourism was something that was just happening along the way. But now we see that it cannot happen just along the way, that we need to control it and we need to run it. And the uh, initiatives that we have done in the past, uh, even since Croatian presidency, uh, last year what we have tried to put forward as a, as a topic of discussion is that we really need uh, partnership on European level and we need to have a certain uh, dedicated budgets for tourism on EU level, Mo not just European funds but something that's part of the European budget in, from which we can finance the projects that are related to, let's say, either labor force or sustainability at all, because sustainability uh, and the end result will not happen, in my personal opinion, unless we invest in it. Now, we invest through education, we invest through uh, uh, building capacities, we invest through uh, uh, softwares and, and digital processes that control the, the distribution of guests and structure and whatnot. And, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, like a, a higher standard that really the industry will not invest in unless it's something that they can uh, get some other uh, uh, revenue sources because it's something that it's not the the, the rule of, uh, the thought is well the country needs to worry about that you know not, not businesses can worry about it and in a way it's true I mean we all need to worry about it because if we don't it's going to be too late later but now it's the time that we all at the European level really uh, stick together in our um, philosophy and, and put forward uh, a thought that we need to control tourism we need to uh, uh, really invest in sustainability in a way that has never been invested so far uh, and um, uh, unify as much as possible uh, our policies. I'll give you one quick example. You, you guys both mentioned uh, American market. Last year, Croatia was the only European country that allowed for American tourists to come. And we were under a lot of scrutiny for that. I mean, at European level, uh, it wasn't looked at uh, with, uh, with a big approval. But if you look at it now with experiences that we have, it really was a common sense. I mean, the country is as big as the whole continent of Europe. We had different rules. We said, okay, from this part of the continent, you can come from this other part, you cannot, and so forth and so forth. And America had also, uh, you know, uh, 50 states that, that have different situations with numbers. And uh, if we were following the protocols, really it's the same if they're coming from uh, distant market or European market, you know, the, the statistical numbers of chances of, of bringing COVID in the country really is the same, whether people are coming from uh, nearby or, or maybe distant market, if these numbers are the same. But that move last year wasn't necessarily for last year. That move was investment into the future. So this year, for example, we had more than uh, like about 55% of, of uh, tourism traffic from the United States uh, compared to the year 2019, which was a record-breaking, especially for the uh, uh, United States market. Uh, so, because it actually helped put the message out there that they're welcome to Croatia. Now, maybe, uh, this is just an example, but maybe if this was a message that we all send as a Europe, as, as, as the only continent, a major market around the world, maybe we wouldn't have a problem in Prague, let's say, uh, or here, or in Croatia with American tourists, maybe that would be back in the larger numbers. So this is just an example of uh, the future of, of running a tourism policy will have to be us coming together with the similar policies such as a green digital certificate. Now imagine if we didn't have that this year, what a mess it would have been. But now everybody's pretty much talking back, somebody's a little bit more happy, somebody a little bit less, but we all can say that we had a productive tourism year in considering. And uh, the question is only how much better we can all get next year. And Europe has always been a leader in tourism. Europe has, has the opportunity now to be a leader of a major shift change across the whole world. But only if we unify and if we actually have a strong tourism policy. Now, tourism countries were not so able to push our, our policy as a, as a forefront, maybe, at EU, at EU level. But now we can, actually. We, we, we have arguments. We, we, something in our back pocket, right? Ich sehe, ich sehe Kopfnicken. Das heißt, 
That is to say, the European cooperation in tourism should uh, evidently be uh, reinforced. Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Pol uh, Mr. Polashek, so American tourists in Prague, yes. And, and I can understand all the, all the words uh, Mr. Minister said, because uh, we have to uh, do it uh, for the foreign markets. We have to be as one Europe. It's simply a message, but it's very important that the rules are, are not different and also uh, into um, inside of the countries, because the political situation changes in country differently. But uh, if we want um, a sustainable tourism, that means also from the foreign countries that they are not uh, just um, uh, staying in one country. For the, the, the foreign countries, it's just one Europe. So we worked uh, to, uh, together uh, in South Bohemia with uh, Eastern Germany and Upper Austria on, on uh, projects like uh, Beer, uh, Region, which is uh, the, the, for the foreign markets, it's the good beer, German beer, Czech beer, uh, Austrian beer. So it's, it's just for them uh, different languages when they still don't understand the differences between the, the languages they don't know. So the, I, I can say yes, that would be perfect. Frau von Stockert, jetzt weiß man zwar noch nicht, wie in Deutschland, wer in Deutschland zukünftig regieren wird oder will. We do not know, Mrs. Stockert, who will reign uh, uh, Germany in the future, but uh, Germany is the motor on the uh, European level. What does the tourists uh, trade uh, wish or, or expect from a new government or the new chancellor? It's uh, going to be interesting, I think, but uh, uh, what is uh, uh, going to be? It's it's probably uh, uh, um, uh, uh, green and liberal. Uh, it will be a, an alliance of three. Uh, the parties will be there, uh, 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 which uh, have uh, different uh, approaches to sustainability, uh, inhibitions, the other more innovations, uh, um, um, uh, writing uh, p possibilities of writing off, and then we will see how uh, we can manage uh, the targets are the same it's not the question where do we want to go rather it's the target is the target more sustainable less co2 uh, emission uh, up to uh, zero level zero co2 to find the solution here up to now it's uh, uh, that we know the targets um, uh, uh, internalization of costs and prices but what is lacking is uh, particularly for the small companies uh, to have incentives for the small ones. Yes, uh, many are uh, residing in regions that uh, are talking about this uh, sensibility, is uh, sustainability issue. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, companies work together and do uh, uh, some uh, uh, pract best practice examples uh, and find solution. I think politics, uh, yes, um, is well advised. Uh, uh, for uh, incentives so that everybody will take part and that we do not arrive at a point somewhere where it becomes too expensive, whether uh, there's the price sh uh, shock for the companies and for the customers, where we can't maintain this level because it's, uh, uh, the product is becoming expensive. Many are talking about um, the mobility, cru uh, cruises, uh, planes, it's also real estate, it's also food. Uh, many aspects uh, that play a role in our uh, trade and pro probably uh, would uh, produce more costs in the future. Here we need innovative approaches, how we can uh, reduce emissions and uh, find a balance between increasing costs and decreasing emissions and uh, find a sustainable concept. Of course, the European Union can play an important role. Cooperation between the states can play a role to find common solution. Best practice uh, is going to be uh, uh, handed over to regions, also states, so that uh, 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 states and uh, European Union become uh, competitive uh, uh, and uh, continue to be attractive. Yes, the competition between the regions and the states uh, in the uh, in Europe, uh, seen from outside, uh, seems strange. Of course, there is this competition among the uh, uh, countries, uh, uh, 
uh, of course, uh, we're looking uh, for tourists uh, uh, who pay um, uh, 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 to restrict uh, it to the fact that, that we just want to offer quality tourism. Uh, uh, we also have guests who can't afford for all uh, all the time uh, to um, uh, uh, spend holidays on a very high level. So we have offices well that uh, can be paid for. And to do this, for example, infrastructure in Germany has to uh, become better. Uh, thinking of railways in Germany, yes, in some areas there are, of course, improvements. I think in the corona crisis we have had uh, possibilities, uh, apart from the climate, but over tourism that has already been addressed, digitalization, which already has begun, we wanted uh, this uh, uh, digitalization to have uh, to improve it digital uh, opportunities we have got this in the business uh, uh, travels uh, uh, in hybrid hybrid meetings but also in the private sector think of uh, uh, the zoos that, that can be booked digitally museums uh, 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 small monuments etc Everybody has uh, had uh, this um, digital um, leap uh, so that we can control and manage things, uh, particularly in areas that have uh, too many tourists at the same time, or well, it's the threat of too many tourists at the same time. So a cost management that is, int is introduced, control of functions, prices, incentives, or other measures to uh, control tourist flows. I think this digitalization uh, leap is very important. So same, uh, same uh, number of tourists, but uh, uh, better divided. Mr. Madonchi, talking about in, in, in periods when we're talking about this opening a new uh, airport, isn't that the wrong uh, direction? Uh, 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 yes and no. Kronstadt, for example, is uh, the capital and the airport is the door, the gate to the world. So we have tourists from all over the world, Americans. Uh, it's in this summer I've had uh, heard all these languages in our pedestrian zone, which of course was a pleasure from all over the world. And we need this gate. Unfortunately, the Romanians uh, in the 30s uh, did not, have not understood that uh, infrastructure is important, the highway. Kronstadt is in the center of a country. It's not being connected um, by uh, motorways. Uh, of course, in the future, more uh, with uh, uh, electrics. Wouldn't be uh, the railway uh, easy, be it, wouldn't it be easier? It, uh, 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 it's uh, traveling uh, uh, with at an average of 52 uh, kilometers per hour. It was a pleasure uh, from Vienna to Salzburg at top speeds of 300 kilometers per hour. I would immediately change uh, uh, to uh, the rail and come uh, from Kronstadt to uh, uh, Salzburg, yes, 230. Yeah, of course, it's an important gate for tourists, uh, but uh, uh, sustainability is something that has to be taken into account. And we have to see uh, that uh, you don't have only cheap uh, uh, airplanes, but also keep up the quality. And quality is important for sustainability. What is also important to keep up quality, to keep uh, the staff. I would wish that in Romania we had a similar return action, as I've just heard, uh, as is uh, done by Austria. Staff that we lost, uh, over 30% of the staff in tourism, we lost them. Uh, for to the new services uh, 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 takeaway or uh, uh, Uber etc. And here we have to see to make it more attractive, to make this work in uh, tourism more attractive. I'll have a look at Austria and see whether this can also be applicable in or in our country. But digitalization has really um, made us uh, make us. Uh, has led to progress, and we can, of course, um, improve services. Uh, uh, to have a European um, tourist hackathon where we give uh, the possibility to young people via digitalization and uh, to offer new ways, new innovations. A startup in Kronstadt, for example, they have to let the terminal for hotels as concierge, uh, so to speak, automatic reception. The tourists can know um, everything there, where are attractions, uh, uh, they can also reserve uh, or book tables. 
without uh, um, asking the receptionist in person and uh, uh, consuming uh, uh, that time. Also, castle roads, this could be done via digital uh, concierges, uh, automatic check, check in, check out. So a lot can be improved here. Of course, we have to learn to cooperate here in Kronstadt, for example, uh, the Bavarian Oktoberfest, and that's a promotional uh, uh, event, the only one in Romania. Uh, with advantage Austria, we have the Austrian uh, Ski Award and uh, do advertising for the Austrian skiing region. Salzburgerland, for example, uh, is um, uh, a partner each year, but we also uh, uh, drink Budweiser beer and Pilsner Urquell. Uh, Dubrovnik in Rome, uh, a very uh, uh, popular location with whom we uh, uh, work together. And of course, uh, the castles we connected all over Europe. And that is, I think, what uh, uh, is our strong point. Europe and sustainable. Europe as a vacation uh, area. And uh, at the end, I would like to give you, to hand over this uh, Kronstadt in Siebenbürgen. Uh, I'm going to expect you uh, 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 with the airplane or rail, whatever. Uh, and I also have uh, for our colleagues uh, uh, from Germany uh, and Austria, I also have these uh, books uh, on uh, sustainable tourism in uh, uh, Romania. I haven't got so many of them here. I will then uh, be uh, pleased to hand them over to the State Secretary and to, to the uh, uh, moderator so that you can have an idea on tourism in Romania. And uh, uh, Madam Minister, uh, just one sentence uh, one was in a climate change and everything. Uh, but are we then allowed to use the airplane? Can we uh, travel by a car? May we build a road? I think we should uh, uh, spend the same energy uh, as we have them in bans or inhibitions. Uh, we, how can we in, uh, how can we restructure uh, traffic? How can we make a more CO2 friendly uh, 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 flying bio in, um, uh, energy biofuel and not concentrating on uh, uh, not uh, building an airport in one of the most important towns uh, uh, in your country? Because holiday uh, and tourism not just relax. It also creates um, further horizons. My grand grandmother, uh, uh, I started uh, in my uh, lecture, the, her radius of 56 kilometers, and this uh, lady told me all over that I should uh, see the world. And uh, these uh, experiences uh, uh, in Asia, uh, conferences on the worst uh, uh, places in the world, I wouldn't, without them, I would not sit here. That's also tourism, of course. The, and uh, tourism is a piece. Uh, we are uh, 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 here in a conference on Europe and peace. Mr. Bado. So, Mr. Bado, you do not only think about regional tourists. No, on the contrary. On one side, why uh, did I talk about doubling of our visitors in the area where we are, the Terman and Volcano land in the southeast Styria? We had 85% uh, uh, Austrian tourists and of course our first, uh, we are of course paying attention to our neighbors, Slovenia, Croatia, Hungary, Western Hungary, but especially all also Friul, uh, Italian, Friul, uh, Venezia and Trieste. And this is are our most important destinations. And when we, uh, due to our values, uh, then we will start about over regional tourism, uh, tourism beyond our region. And here we have the advantage for an Asian market, of an American market. We uh, cover four countries. And for tourists who do not want to see borders is also important. And then we should also think, and this is what we have prepared already in e-mobility, we have now a project where we can drive with electric cars from castle to castle 
<clears throat> accompanied by a film team, and in the future, the castles should be linked, connected among themselves, and there should be an electrical charging station for cars and for bicycles, because, and that has developed during the last years, we want to have tourism all over the year. And this is our advantage, and this is not only Burgenland, this is also Slovenia, this is the Styria, these are Croatia, these are the, the spas. And so we have this possibility to have tourism all over the year. And of course, this is also positive for the castles which are connected. And I also would like to add, well, in my region, uh, culinary and uh, food has developed. The Mrs. Minister was in my region not long ago. And this has something to do with the volcanic territory, this new Route 66, the Route 66, that's the Federal uh, Road 66, which is going from Ilz, crossing, uh, just uh, connecting all the castles to Bad Radkasburg, to the next highway leading to Slovenia. And here we have 37 class production uh, productions, and there people uh, can see, uh, no, sorry, so, uh, 46 production sites where you can see how products are produced, uh, chocolate or ham, and I think that's interesting. You should have a connection between cultural tourism and uh, these tourists are the pupils, and these tourists are always not only high-ranking persons, and the combination between food and uh, and wine, we offer wonderful wines, and also the castles connected with the spas which are in that region. And I think here we have chances to be uh, appreciated and acknowledged also on an international level. We are at the end of our time. I would like to thank you for listening. And now I ask Mr. Schausberger to uh, conclude this conference with a last dialogue and say a few sentences. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.